y'all don't know. Y'all, y'all be seated if you can. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, you about to you you about to make somebody hurt themselves up in here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's like saying sick him to a mad dog. <laughs> That's all right. Mm. I counted it a joy to be here with you. Bless you, Pastor. Now y'all sang. <laughs> y'all got me all stirred up. Yeah, yeah. And I don't get out much. <laughs> Time, Can I go to the piano just for a minute? Go ahead, Pastor. Take your time. All right. That's all I'm right. kind of old school. Do you mind if I go to your keyboard for a minute? Go ahead, Pastor. I'm kind of old school. Hold my new, I mean my coat. <laughs> <laughs> just a little keyboard, that's all. I got you. All right. Hey, Jay. I won't be but a minute. I'm very old school. I came from a rather dignified church. But somewhere along the way, I learned how to have church. All right. for the privilege of being here this evening with you and I want to thank the Lord for 
two of my deacons being out here with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Deacon Barbara Smith Amen. and Deacon Rhonda Washington. Amen. They are two of my faithful armor bearers. All right. Yeah. Praise God. That's now, good. that's good. The president's got the secret service. <laughs> I have Deacon Smith and Washington. That's all right. They've taken a lot of bullets. Yeah, yeah, there you go. In the past, right. behavior. There you go. That's all right. That's good. And I say that and I mean it. That's good. And so I thank God for them mm -hmm. being here. Praise God. I count it a joy and a privilege to share in this your 12th anniversary. And when I got the invitation, um, the Lord began to speak to me in every part of my being mm. as to what to say to you. And the Lord began to give me a portion of uh, this passage of scripture coming from 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 38 through 44. And it says, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people, Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and shall spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven. Mm thy dwelling place mm -hmm. and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou even thou only knowest the hearts of all the children of men that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou givest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people, Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy stretched forth arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do to all that the stranger calleth to thee, for that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee, as do thy people Israel. And that they shall, and that they may know that this house which I have builded is called by thy name. Mm. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen and toward the house that I have built for thy name. And I'm going to stop right there. And my topic for this evening is blessings on this house. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And that is what the Lord gave me for you this mm. evening. Mm. Blessings on this house. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, when I got the call from the pastor uh, by way of my good friend, Pastor Brian Darrell. Um, and I got back with uh, Pastor Todd. I was driving up Raleigh Street and not long, I guess, after you all got this church, I was driving up the street and I could see the spire on the top of your building. 
and I was sharing the vision that God had given me some time ago, not long after you all came here, and as I heard uh, Sister yeah. Brown, uh, First Lady Brown, talking about your history, Amen. then it became clear when all of this was taking place that God was showing me this. And as I saw that, and I want all of you that are members of All Nations Outreach Center, I want you to look at your church in a different way from now on. All right. Man. All right. I want you to hear me. Yeah, go ahead, Pastor. Because now I know and I'm, I'm feeling yeah. the anointing that God was, what God was giving me, Pastor. I was mm -hmm. telling you earlier. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at your church in a different way from now on. Mm -hmm. As I was coming up here, God showed me the spire on a ship. Your folks done got quiet. It's all right. It's all right. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead, and I could see it was like a, a cruise ship. And then God carried me to uh, the passage and showed me Noah's Ark. Mm, all right. And the Ark was designed to carry Noah's family and, of course, the animals mm -hmm. to safety in the midst of a storm when it had rained for the very first time, when the world had gone deep into sin and it carried Noah's family and animals to safety when God destroyed the world. And God showed me the church being like the ship of Zion, carrying those who come into the ark of safety. That's right. Meaning the, the, the household of faith. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we weather many a storm. Yeah. But if we hold sure to the course go ahead, go ahead. that God has laid out, We'll make it safely to the other side. Yeah. And every time I would come by here, I would see that. And God would show me a ship. And for the long time, I couldn't understand, why are you showing me a ship when I see this church? Now, I passed other churches on the way, but this is what would stand out from blocks away. All right. And as I told your pastor this evening, and he said you were planning to remodel, I said, now, whatever you do, I know you might want to change the color, but don't change what stands out on the ship. You can put a cross on it if you want, or do whatever you need to dress it up, but don't change what stands out on the ship, because that's your beacon. All right. All right. Teacher that's Pat. your beacon. Somebody needs to find the ship like the lighthouse mm -hmm. gives direction. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I, my, my purpose this evening is to encourage you in your work and in your vision. Yeah, that's good, Pastor. That's good. I was glad to hear of your call and your anointing. Praise God. And I've got a, a history with your family. I used yeah. to be your brother's yeah. pastor. Amen. I baptized him Amen. In, in, in the Baptist church. Amen. Right. So we, 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 have, we have a history, and, and during some dark times in, in my life, your, your brother stood by me. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was stood to reason that when his brother gave a call, who now is my brother in ministry, I'm going to give a Macedonian call. <laughs> Go ahead. An answer. Go ahead. Yeah. And so, so, so you see, there was a reason for being here. So I said, I'm going to encourage and to say amen to the vision yeah. that God has given you. Yeah. Now, I, and I want to confirm what God has shown you. Mm -hmm. Now, now one thing I want to share with you, and I've got a, a friend on the West Coast, and uh, just this past month, my friend and pastor Dave Householder, whom your brother knows because he met him when he came here several years ago, we met at a Pastor's Promise Keepers convention in Atlanta. And he came east and we all went together to the uh, celebration we had in Washington, D.C. And several years later when Dave left Minnesota and went 
and pastored in Los Angeles, where he's pastoring right now. The Lord led him from one church into founding another church, mm -hmm. which now, by the way, he just celebrated last month, eight years. Praise God. And this was right around the time that I got the call to come and help you celebrate yeah. 12 years. Yeah. And so a couple of weeks ago, I asked him, I said, can you tell me what it was like to found the church? And he said, there are no backups. Come on, brother. Say There's it. nothing to fall back on. That's it. Say it. He said, you have to just trust God. Yeah. Yeah. He said, there are some scary moments, but you have to trust God. Amen. There are some dark moments, but you have to trust God. Yeah. A lot of folks will start out with you yeah. and say, oh yeah, hundreds will say, oh yeah, we're with you. We got your back. Go ahead, Pastor. And then when you get there, there might be just a handful. Amen. But yeah. you've got to trust God. Amen, yeah. sir. Amen. And if you've got the vision and you've yeah. written it down and, yeah. and you've, got, you've got it written down and made plain, God will see you through. Amen. Yeah. Pastor. Amen. Now, 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 there might be some folks that say, why start another church? Mm -hmm. Their church is just a couple of blocks away in every direction. But you know, my understanding and everything that I've read and I've studied is we don't have enough churches yeah. because when you look yeah. at the population of oh, this country right. and how many people are church yeah. in America, uh -huh. we still need yeah. more yeah. churches yeah. because right. a very small yeah. portion of the country is saved. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So therefore, right. there is plenty of work for yeah. us to do, right. even the ones that are already established, and there still needs to be more planted, and for those that are planted, there's plenty of work to be done. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Starting is not easy. That's right. And growing I know you got growing pains. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Even churches that have been around a while yeah. yes. got growing pains. Yeah. Yes. And I mentioned in my message on Sunday, a church is a living, breathing organism. That's right. Yes. Why do you think that the word calls the church the body of Christ? All right, yes. all right. We start off as infants. We, we, are, we, we have to be carried. Uh -huh. We start learning to walk. Then we sometimes we slip, we fall, we get up, we skin our knees. Right. We learn how to, we, and I remember when, when my daughter was an infant, when she discovered her left hand, she discovered her right hand. She discovered she had a voice and she made noises just to hear herself make noises. Uh -huh. yes. And then when she discovered her feet, and I remembered her biting her toes just because she had discovered yeah. she had toes. Amen. And then as they began to grow, the body begins to change. Yeah. And thank God puberty is over. I never would want to go through that again. Amen. 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 Everybody ought to be saying amen. amen. But the older we get, our bodies begin to change. Yeah. We begin to get to the stage where we move very spry, we move very quickly, and then we begin to slow a little bit. And we begin to slow a little bit more. There was a time when we popped out of bed and now some of us roll to the side. We get up and we anoint ourselves in the morning. Yeah, amen, folks. We anoint ourselves from head to toe. And if we don't know how to call on the Lord, we start learning Later on, oh Lord, have mercy. Oh Jesus, help me. 
Yeah. And I listened to my dad yesterday when I took him to the grocery store. Day before yesterday, rather, when I took him to the grocery store. If the Lord spares him, thank God, he'll be 90 years old. Wow. From the 27th of May. And I don't think he'll mind me telling you. I feel for him, and if I could take away his arthritis pain that the doctor can do nothing for. But as we, as we were going to the grocery store, and I took him around, he had a lot of errands, and I could tell he was in excruciating pain. But every time we'd move, he'd go, oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And I could tell he was in pain, and I'm thinking, God, if I could just take that pain from him, I would. I would. But then as he would say, Lord, have mercy, I was thinking, I said, you know, I said, God, I know he's talking to you, not just calling you, yeah. but he is talking to you. Why? Because he knows you and has a relationship with you. Praise and God. you are the one that has sustained him for 90 years. You are the one Lord. he talks to in the morning when he gets up. You are the one he turns his face to in the morning when he starts trying to roll to get out of bed. Yeah. You are the one he calls on when he goes to stand in the tub. You are the one he That's calls it. father it. when he makes his way to his chair lift to go downstairs because he can't Praise walk God. those stairs Thank in the you, morning. Lord. You are the one he calls on when he goes back up the lift at Praise night God. and says Lord have mercy for the last time when he gets in the bed and he lays down and looks up at heaven because he can't kneel to pray anymore but he can lay there and look up at you yeah. Father. Yeah. Lord I yeah. thank you that he can still call you with breath on his lips. Lord. Father, Lord. your people yeah. need to understand yeah. what you were saying when Solomon was praying uh -huh. over the house that he had built. And it wasn't so much just the building. Uh -huh. You see, the building symbolized something. Uh -huh. The coming together yeah. of a people. Uh -huh. Now, it's one thing to have a building, and your building mm -hmm. is nice. And these are the same kind of chairs we have in our choir, <laughs> just a different color. I felt right at home. I said, I feel like I'm sitting at home here. <laughs> just different color chairs. Amen. Carpet is just about the same color. Isn't this about the same color as our Praise carpet? God. Almost in the Praise day. Y'all mm -hmm. got good taste in carpet. Amen. <laughs> and I got to thinking, I said, but God, you know, it's beyond the building. It's yeah. the vision you've given yeah, in yeah. the heart of the people. It's the vision and the passion that you put in the people. It's the anointing that you put in their hearts, God, that needs to be trans transpired. Yeah into them that they need to all grasp and move forward and support the man of God that they can say by God's grace we can do it we might be small in number and I don't know how many folks you have but I don't care it's not important but everybody needs to come together and say we can do it yeah and it's yeah. not about the building come and on. I'll tell you what's going to happen yeah because I've seen it happen Same in the God. house of Wayne, right? All right. Oh, yeah, when you get some things done. Uh-huh. And when you get the things done, you were talking about with, yeah. with expanding that way and yeah. changing the facade that way yeah. and, and getting a formal kitchen. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, and I'm claiming all that land over there. Yeah. When you oh, show I me out it. that window and I says, I receive it for them in the name of Jesus. <laughs> right, right. And when you show me how far it goes back there, I says, and God stretched the building <laughs> back there and filled the house, <laughs> not with fake folk, but <laughs> real folk. <laughs> Yeah. You don't need no trouble. Amen. You need folks that's going to be real. You said that right. Amen, sir. Amen. And cover this house with the blood of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Cover it, Father, oh, with the blood of Jesus. Oh, my God. And when I saw, saw all of that, yeah. and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You see, because I know church folk. Go ahead, Pastor. Help I cut my teeth on the back of church Help pews. Yourself. 
<laughs> and I don't care what the denomination, non-denomination, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Go ahead. When something's new, All right now. glittery, oh, come on. shiny, Say it now. Yeah. folks will flock to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they will. Until the novelty wears off. That's right. <laughs> and then they'll start nitpicking. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then when something else newer, mm -hmm. shinier, mm -hmm. more glittery mm -hmm. comes along, mm -hmm. they'll flock to that. My, my, my. That's what will happen. Mm. But I'm going to tell you right now. Go ahead. Captain of this ship, yeah. hold the helm tight. Yeah. And don't be swayed by numbers. That's good, right. Pastor. That's a word. That's a word. Keep, keep your eye on the charts. That's a word, brother. That's a word. Keep your eye on the chart mm -hmm. that the master gave. Yes. Because if you keep your eye on the chart, He'll always lead you on the course you need to follow. Amen. Some may fall away. Yeah. But you know, now, are those real flowers? No. Okay, no. but let's say those were real flowers. All right. Real potted flowers, like roses. My mama had roses in the yard when I was growing up. To this day, I promise the good Lord and a few folks I know I will never have a rose bush in my yard. <laughs> they are beautiful flowers. Yeah. But they got to be pruned. And roses got thorns. Yeah. Yeah. And growing up, guess whose job it was to prune oh, the geez. rose bushes? <laughs> my God. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> then I had to bag them pruned off things. <laughs> And put them out for the trash. Yeah. And you know what always happened with the rose thorns? They bit you. Yeah. But let's just say those were roses. Every now and then, they got to be pruned. They have to be. Because if you don't prune them, you won't get fresh roses. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You'll get dead stems. And you won't get new blossoms. The more you prune it back, the more roses you get. God, go ahead, brother. You taught me, man. So sometimes God prunes his house. Now pruning is painful. Go ahead, brother. Talk. And it happens to fruit trees. Now, they got a whole lot of orchards and stuff around here. You got to prune trees. You got to prune fruit trees. Yeah. If you don't prune them, they don't produce more fruit. That's Sometimes good. pruning has to happen. Oh. Pruning hurts. Good, brother. That's good. Yeah. It's, a word. it's like chastising. Oh, Lord, I wasn't going to go there. Praise Come on. Jesus, I didn't have that down. Sometimes, folks, even if you stay here, sometimes you got to be chastised. Yeah. With love. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. like pruning. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. Yeah. But if you love the chastising or the gentle correction or let me use a very proper school term, the redirect. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> the redirect is so that you can flourish and blossom and have more fruit. Yeah. What do you think God did for Israel for 40 years when they wandered in the uh, the yeah. wandered in the wilderness? He was pruning them because wow. they weren't quite, re quite ready. Yes, he had given them the promised land. Yes, it was oh, theirs, but good. they weren't ready. That's he good. had to prune off everything but two branches, oh, Joshua and oh, Caleb, yeah. and then raise up a whole yeah. new branch yeah. off of them stems. Yeah. Even Moses yeah. didn't yeah. make it. Go ahead, preacher. My goodness, that's a word. But when he'd finished pruning, when he sent them back the next time, he says, all right, I gave the last generation they're Red Sea crossing. Uh huh. Y'all haven't seen nothing like that. Y'all were raised in the wilderness. Y'all need a river crossing. Amen. All right. Oh. So they carried the ark down into the Jordan River. Oh, excuse me, my English. Jordan River. <laughs> <laughs> 
And when they got down into the river, he told some others, he says, y'all carry 12 stones with you. And when you get down in the middle of the river, I want you to put them 12 stones up in the river. Yeah. In the middle of the river, Ben. Yeah. yeah. Sit the ark upon it. And when he got down in the middle, the water went back. Yeah. So they could walk across on dry, dry ground. ground. Yeah. Just yeah. like he had done 40 years earlier yeah. in the Red Sea. Yeah. Man. And they walked by with the ark sitting on top of those stones held by the Levites. With the, the, the cherubims with their wings sped, yeah. spread backwards and forwards around the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. And they walked by as God stood on those 12 stones, one for each of the 12 tribes. And when they all got by, the Levites picked the Ark up, yeah. walked to the other side. Yeah. And what did they leave in the middle? The monument of them 12 stones. And when they, their feet got to the other side, the water came back in and left a monument in the middle so that it would remind future generations that they had crossed the sea right there. And when, when a future generations look back, they say, what do those stones mean? Oh, that's where God brought us across into the promised land. So now, my God. Solomon Thank has you. built the house, the building, the place for God's ark to dwell. And he tells the people, he prays and says, God, when anybody prays, bless them. Not just when they come in here to pray, but God, if they go into battle and they so much as even Look this way. Bless them. If they pray for anything in your name yeah. and turn this way, yeah. bless them. Yeah. If they're not even a part of this church, yeah. Yeah. not even a part of this nation, uh -huh. but they come here to fellowship oh. and they come here and ask for a blessing. Bless them. Yeah. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying to you before I get ready to take my seat is that what your name says, all nations outreach Amen. Amen. is not just for your members here, Amen. but you're going to reach others, on, not bro. just those yeah. that put the name right. on the road in yeah. your book, yeah. but there's some yeah. that are going to walk off the street yeah. just yeah. because they see on, church. That's it right there. They will need a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. They will come in and fall yeah. prostrate yeah. before yeah. God here yeah. That's right. because right. they fall prostrate because of an anointing here. God bless them. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your anointing yeah. sharp. Yeah. Let the oil of God yeah. continue to fall on you. Yeah. And if they turn this way, wow. God bless them. Yeah. If the pastor so much as calls on you, Lord, let your anointing fall fresh upon him. Let it fall not only on him, fall upon his family, fall upon his elders, his armor bearers, his musicians, his members, anyone they touch, Father, if they come this way, let your anointing fall, that someone will know they've been in the presence of someone who walks and talks in the presence of God, that they might come to know you because they are following you who 
time the glory's on you. Amen. 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 Yes, yes, yes. He's doing Hallelujah. something. Yes, he is. And it has nothing to do with denominations. Amen. That's right. That's right. Nothing to do with denominations. He's going to bless you. Hallelujah. And he's going to bless you mightily. Yes, Y'all hear the man of God. Responsibility of taking care of your physical being. Yeah. He has the responsibility of practicing what's called the healing arts. How I many of you trust your doctor? Amen. Come on. You tell you tell him, Doc, this is where I ache. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he writes out a prescription. Yeah. And you take the medicine. That's right. Yes. That's right, Pastor. That's you don't know whether he's giving you poison or not. That's you right. take it because you trust him. That's yes. right. Your spiritual leaders have the responsibility of taking care of your spiritual well being. Yes. Yes. That is their responsibility. Yes. His responsibility, her responsibility, and all of the leaders are to prepare you to spend eternity with Jesus. Amen. Yes. And if you refuse to accept the medicine that they give you, it's just like going to the doctor and saying, I ain't paying him no attention. Yeah. And you know what will eventually happen? You're going to die. Yeah. yeah. Say that, Pastor. That's the truth. Now, a loving pastor is going to look out for you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And if he doesn't, he's going to have to answer to God. That's right. He's going to have to answer to God. Yeah. And just like if a doctor doesn't do right by you, he can answer to the medical board and lose his license to practice. So we're spiritual doctors. Yeah. 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 So keep that in mind. Because there's a great work that God has for you all to do yes, it as is. a church yeah. family. Yes, it is. Thank you. Jesus. Amen. And all I want to do is just encourage you. Yeah, that's good. Keep on keeping on. Because the battle's not going to be easy. 